Boom and we're live. Good day, good morning, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another busy day in the markets with InstructFX. My name is Andrew, and today I'm bringing you the latest news from the markets before the opening bell, along with Rian Hobson from his cozy office in uh, South Africa. So buckle up, hit that subscribe button, and uh, let's uh, get started. Rian Hobson is uh, is joining us uh, as we speak. Uh, Rian, uh, good afternoon to you. Glad to have you back. How is South Africa doing today? Good afternoon, but Chelly. Uh, but we will survive. Anything, anything yeah, above, Africa. anything below twenty degrees is cold in South Africa. Oh yes, right. <laughs> did you uh, did you enjoy your uh, days off, uh, Rian? How was it? Yeah, I was on the beach, standing up. But I hope for that. But uh, yeah, it was okay. Just the Chinese cracked down, but other than that, it was fine. Well, luckily, you're not in China. You left me here by myself uh, for, for two days. I barely made it in the last uh, two days. You have no idea what I had to do <laughs> with so much going on in the markets, but it's okay. Today, we have a big, big day in the economic calendar. We had the core CPI on the Canadian dollar, crude oil inventories, and the long-awaited Fed interest rate decision, followed by a press conference, of course. Rian, with a growth of 10% and inflation at 5%, will the Fed keep fueling the markets? What's your take on this one? I definitely think the Federal Reserve don't have much of a choice but to fuel the market. I think they are basically in a catch-22 um, because you have inflation that is, that is actually posing a bit of a risk. I think it will stick a bit. Um, and then on the other side, it was a bit of slack. If you look at uh, the durable goods that was off yesterday, uh, we didn't make the forecast. And then you look at the uh, home home sales. So those things are, are playing a bit on the Fed. And then you have the job claims that were spiking up to 400. I think it was last week. Um, so all of those things are poisonous. And I think he will use the, the same words as transitory. They're talking about tapering. Um, I think he's just going to keep on fueling the market. I think he, he don't have much of a choice, actually. Um, so he will come with the same story of transitory and he will talk about, they are talking about tapering maybe. That's it. But he will keep on fueling it. That's what some uh, some analysts were uh, were saying earlier on as well. Anyhow, we're going to see what's going to happen. It's only around the corner. Yesterday, we had an avalanche of tech companies reporting. We saw Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, and Visa at the top of the uh, earnings calendar yesterday. And it's no surprise that all of them absolutely smashed it in the second quarter. However, we saw Apple sleeping with chip shortage now at uh, the iPhone's door. Right. This is not uh, all. We're going to have uh, Alphabet, Microsoft. Uh, uh, no, sorry. Alphabet, Microsoft and Apple generated a total of uh, $57 billion in the quarter, which is an average of $626 million a day. How about that? Yeah, yeah exactly. If some, uh, I mean, we, we've been talking about very high numbers uh, this week, uh, Rian. And last week, we were talking about $28 million, so you and I can go to uh, to space and see what's uh, happening there. Now we're seeing uh, $567 billion, uh, $57 billion in the quarter with an average of $626 million a day. Uh, we better get used to these uh, numbers, especially that uh, Bitcoin, your favorite, is supposed to go to 400000 by the end of the year, according to some uh, finance gurus on uh, YouTube. <laughs> right. Back to the earnings season. If uh, some people were asking if we reach the peak for the earnings season, there's much more to come. Today, we're going to have a big, big day with uh, with the FANG stocks coming out of the closet, let's say. Yeah, we're going to have uh, Facebook, PayPal, Pfizer, McDonald's, and another handful of big uh, firms reporting. And um, tomorrow, again, we're going to have an, a cascade of uh, good news, hopefully. Yeah, with Amazon, MasterCard, AstraZeneca. Yeah, and Friday, we're going to have Berkshire Hathaway, Procter & uh, Gamble towards the bottom. See how many companies are reporting. Uh, and uh, ExxonMobil at the top of the list, followed by another 30, 40 high cap companies. Are you ready for this earnings season, uh, Rian? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely uh, looking at the early seasons. Um, but I, I honestly, with these numbers, you need to look at like, uh, obviously, it is true. Um, but then you have to ask yourself, like, Will it go further on? Is there enough muscle to push it on? Um, that, that is for me is the big question. Maybe smaller companies, yeah. But for me, Apple, for example, I think I think it's done for, for Apple. 
Um, it's more of a, for me, of a holding stock or a safety stock, I would say it's Apple or Amazon, for example. Um, but um, with the smaller guys, I would maybe look for smaller companies uh, in the growth sector. But Apple for me and then Amazon, for me, I would say that's holding stocks. And I think we will not see this big numbers again. Right. Fair enough. Are you ready to invest in stocks this quarter? No, not at all. I will stay with FX. <laughs> yeah. By the way, did you manage to buy any cryptos? No, not at all. I stick to oil. <laughs> okay. You are the man you need to teach me on that. Right. What do I have to do? Yeah, to, to make Rian Hobson invest in some stocks, yeah, and uh, maybe some cryptos. I'll start a campaign if you want. Make Rian Hobson invest in cryptocurrencies. If we get, I'll tell you what, let's make a deal. If we get 50 likes on this video, are you going to start uh, cryptocurrencies? I'll help you. I'll be next to you. I think that is a good idea. And don't forget the two whiskeys that you need to decrease for the likes. <laughs> to me, I told you, if you're going to have fun for two days, I'm not going to be the only one suffering. I'll suffer <laughs> out of the bottles. Now, right, we have, uh, we're a few minutes ahead of the, uh, of the opening bell. We have about 10 minutes. Should we get started with the news of the day? What do you reckon? Oh, yes, we have to especially the one of tonight, which is the FOMC. That, that for right. me, will be the, the main indicator which we can send commodities up or down, or even the crypto, not, not the crypto market, but the FX market can actually also send up or down. Don't get involved in things you don't know. Right. I know you're, uh, you can't wait for the crude oil inventories, so uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you uh, present commodities. But let me do the headlines of the day first, yeah, and then you can take over with, uh, with commodities. Sounds fair enough? Fair enough. Right. Okay. Ladies, gentlemen, traders, uh, here's what's happening in the markets on this um, beautiful uh, Wednesday, July 27th, 2021. Right. We're looking at uh, the FANG stocks. We're going to start with the FANG stocks. The FANG stocks or mega cap tech companies continue to generate more cash and even the most optimistic expectations. Um, Alphabet, uh, Apple and Microsoft all reported record quarters after the uh, closing bell yesterday with a combined profit of $57 billion, which equals to $626 million per day. Although their uh, earning figures came out way above consensus predictions, Apple announced that the chip shortage will likely slow down their uh, revenues for the next quarters, sending its share price down yesterday after the announcement. The uh, Nasdaq Composite is very likely to outperform today after a strong uh, announcement um, by heavy tech companies. However, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was down 0.2% before the opening bell today, and the S&P 500 showed a modest gain of only 1%. Uh, 0 0.1 percent uh, uh, right moving on moving on we're going to have a look at the u.s dollar index which is under uh under pressure um, ahead of the the fed meeting the federal reserve starts a two-day meeting and following this meeting the fed will probably tell the rest of the world whether it's uh changed its mind about the timing when to reduce its bond purchases and raise interest rates the U.S. dollar index did not make any notable changes since yesterday, trading around the $92.50 uh, uh, mark on the European trading session uh, today. Bear with me for a second. There it is. Yeah, we see uh, the U.S. dollar index making very, very, very little moves. It's currently trading at 92.65. Yeah, only 10 basis points gain for the U.S. dollar index ahead of the, um, the Fed uh, interest rate decision later on today. Now we can move to uh, crude oil WTI, where crude oil WTI prices literally froze since Monday as the spike in COVID uh, cases worldwide and an increased quota for the OPEC Plus members might affect supply and demand in the second half of the year. The American Petroleum Institute data released uh, last night showed a draw of 4.7 million barrels for uh, last week and consensus predicts a draw of 2.9 million barrels for the crude oil inventories announced in one hour from now. Moving on, moving on with more exciting news. We see uh, gold futures traded uh, lower today on the European trading session, falling below the 1,800 mark once again. And cryptocurrencies, guys, the mighty Bitcoin and uh, Ethereum gained overnight with uh, Bitcoin rising over 5% and uh, topping up the $40,000 level once again. 
and uh, Ethereum only gaining 1.4%, trading at around $2,300. Right, these are the hottest uh, topics today. And shortly after the break, Rian Hobson will uh, bring us the latest news on the commodities market. I was dying to say this. From uh, Europe to South Africa, from Limassol to Cape Town and London, this is InstructFX News. U.S. markets open and commodities markets coming up. Right, and we're back after the break with uh, Rian Hobson bringing us the latest uh, news in the commodities markets. Rian, the stage is yours. Yep, from a very chilly Cape Town, but I actually do expect uh, on the Brent crude, which will, we will get actually the crude uh, oil inventories later today at around South African time at about half past four. Now, this will be an actually interesting thing. Now, one, you will see that the uh, oil prices is being sitting there now for quite some time at about 72. This is now the crude oil inventories at about 72. So it, it didn't move as much. Um, so it's been sitting there dead still. Now, th now there's an option where it can go up or it can go and uh, it can go uh, actually down. Um, and obviously we need to be careful on this one. Now, if that inventories come out, which I do expect, we will get actually a, uh, a plus number on the inventories. Because one, I looked at, which is my favorite indicator, which is now the beige huge uh, crude oil rigs. Now that actually ticked up from the last time that we checked, um, it was sitting at about close to about here, yeah, about 380 and it's up with about seven. So it's on 387 rigs that it's actually uh, uh, increased a bit. So, that for me says that we might see actually a plus sign on the inventories and not the negative sign as the one that we saw, um, I think it was last week where we got a surprise number, which was on the upside with the oil inventories. Now, nothing happened with the oil inventory, but although the oil inventories increased, it did not actually brought the oil prices down, it actually increased. That was a bit weird and I didn't take that trade at all because normally if you have a plus number on the inventories, you would expect oil prices actually to go down due to an oversupply of oil. But that was the opposite, oil prices went up and I actually backed off. Now with this one, I do expect a plus number again, oil prices retrace a bit, then comes tonight where the Federal Reserve will be dovish, and that is where we will see the oil prices actually increases. Now, that is where the whole thing, if Jerome Powell now comes in with transitory and they will keep talking about tapering and all of those things, then I think that will push the oil prices up, and that is where I will maybe jump in. That is now if Jerome Powell stick to the script with transitory right very well said so far what else have we got for us from the commodities markets ryan because uh, crude oil and gold are not the only commodities and sometimes people tend to be missing a lot just by focusing on the crude oil gold and the good old euro us dollar what else do you have for us look thanks a lot for marcus.com we have soft commodities down here uh, we have the cocoa prices. Look, for me, this is actually quite a strange behavior because it's 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 hot in um, um, uh, in Europe uh, or I would say in the in the northern hemisphere. Look at, at coffee prices. Coffee prices have been surging. It's been going up. You would expect with uh, um, with a warmer temperature, and obviously the Europeans and I would say the whole entire West, um, big consumers of coffee you would expect that the prices of coffee to go down because of the heat, but it looks like someone is piling up coffee there and <laughs> literally keeping it for the winter. Or maybe you guys expect a very cold winter to come, but this actually where the coffee prices increases, and I think that price might actually increase further because um, you guys will approach um, winter. 
Well, yeah, and we also do like to uh, to drink coffee. That's how we wake up in the morning. What else have you got for us? What else is doing well on the market? Um, look, besides that, my big thing that I actually look at, which is now the currencies, this is the one for me, the darling, which is actually USD and Canada. Now, this one is a bit up and down and rocky, and that is all to do with the, um, with the oil prices. Now, um, the inflation number came out for, for Canada, which I will not pay attention too much to that, because the oil inventory is a big one, and also what the Federal Reserve will say um, um, uh, later. Now, if you look at um, Canada's performance for the last few months, look, Canada was at one to one, and a lot of analysts were saying, listen here, Canada is going to be, it's going to get below the one, two mark. Um, I personally think Canada has the potential that is now depending on the oil price and depending on the Canadian economy, which is literally performing good. I do expect that we might see Canada go back to that level again of 1.21. Now, that is normally my darling. Canada, Australia, New Zealand, those commodity currencies, those are the ones I actually always look out if we see actually Jerome Powell become or will be uh, dovish tonight. Right. What's happening with gold futures? We have gold futures uh, directly linked to the uh, to the US dollar index. What is happening with gold? Where are we going to see gold uh, heading to uh, recently in the near future, uh, Rian? The, the thing is with gold, I was actually surprised for the last two days with a Chinese crackdown that we would get maybe a spike in gold because of the uncertainty around what is going on um, in China. I was expecting gold to maybe to go to uh, 1825 or something when the news actually broke out that China is going after all the big companies in um, uh, Chinese government going after the big companies, but nothing actually happened. And that for me was the, the big surprise. Um, it, it all depends basically maybe on tonight um, if Jerome Powell is actually dovish, and then obviously we will see that gold will maybe get some few legs again and maybe reach that 1825 level. Um, but as things stand, gold has been really flat and an underperformer now for the last few months. I think maybe it's following the bond hills because, look, even the bond hills is trading faster than the gold price. But I hope there's something going, uh, maybe something happened with, uh, with Jerome Powell staying dovish and maybe gold price will go up. It, it, it's really been tough trading gold because it's been hovering around 1806 and then it goes down to, to the 1790 level, but there's really nothing going on in gold. I expect gold to go up. That depends on Jerome Powell by staying dovish tonight. Right. Nicely said. Right. We are at the um, U.S. markets open. We're going to take a 30 second break and then we're going to come back with the charts of the day. We're going to have a look at the signals of the day and what else is happening in the markets today. So stay tuned, guys. We're coming back live in exactly 30 seconds with the U.S. markets open. Discover how some of the top executives are trading their own companies with our insider trades tool. See who's been buying or selling stock and what their trades say about insider sentiment. Use this unique big data tool to make more informed stock trades. That's higher trading from MarketX. Right, and the time is uh, 4 and uh, 31 minutes, guys. We are one minute into the, uh, the US trading session. Quickly, quickly, just before we move on to the charts of the day, I want to run some stocks by you and uh, see what is happening with the stock markets as the earnings season has reached its peak. Alphabet, Boeing, Rice Pre Market, Starbucks and Spotify fall. This is the headline of this, uh, of this article. Let's have a quick read through and then I will uh, show you the charts of the day. So... Um, Google stock rose 3.9% after the Google uh, parent reported a 62% rise in total revenue, while net income rose more than two and a half uh, times as advertising revenue soared. Microsoft rose 1% after the tech giant beat expectations for revenue and earnings, helped by a boom in cloud services. Apple fell 0.8% uh, after the iPhone maker highlighted the global shortage of chips could now uh, begin to hurt manufacturing of its key product, even as it uh, reported a record 
third quarter with customers buying more of its premium 5G phones. Starbucks stock fell 3.3% after the coffee giant cut its fiscal 2021 forecast for sales in China, its most important overseas market, where COVID-related restrictions are still being extended to combat localized outbreaks. Sales in um, its home U.S. Uh, market were strong, offsetting higher input costs. We saw Boeing rising 5.7% after the aircraft uh, manufacturer reported its first uh, quarterly profit in almost two years, helped by a surge in deliveries of commercial planes as uh, airlines started to recover from the pandemic. McDonald's also dropped 0.4% uh, despite the, the fast food giant reporting a jump in uh, same-store sales of just over 40% in the second quarter, exceeding the pre-pandemic levels of 2019 for the second straight quarter. Now, pay attention, pay close attention. We're talking about Pfizer, guys. No, Rian, not that Pfizer. We're talking about the vaccine, uh, which is uh, stock rose 0.1% after the pharma giant increased its sales forecast for its COVID vaccine uh, by nearly a third to $33 billion. Uh, GSK uh, ADR fell 0.9% after the drug maker forecast another drop in 2021 profit despite its uh, vaccine business picking up as routine hospital visits recovered. Barclays in London also rose 3.5% after the British bank announced increases to um, dividends and stock buybacks with its uh, investment banking and equities business posting record numbers. And uh, we see Spotify falling 3.6% uh, after the music streaming service reported that its monthly active user numbers came in below guidance. Right, with this being said, uh, let's have a quick look at the uh, US markets open on this uh, beautiful uh, Wednesday 28th, guys, sorry, 28th of July, 2021. Let's see what's happening. We are a couple of minutes into the, um, the US trading session. Nothing big happened with uh, crude oil WTI uh, so far. Today, uh, we see crude oil WTI trading at exactly $72 a barrel with uh, RSI stochastic somewhere between overbought and oversold levels, yeah, indicating nothing, basically. Um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of tension, yeah, a lot of... Um, a lot of expectancy yeah, from, uh, from crude oil WTI. Let's see what's happening with the euro, which has been tanking the entire uh, European trading session uh, today. We see the euro trading versus the US dollar at uh, 117.99, yeah, only a couple of hours ahead of the um, Fed uh, interest rate decision. So the uh, European currency is definitely under pressure today. However, we can see um, the euro trading a bit higher than uh, than it did last week and creating a couple of higher highs and a couple of higher lows here on the charts, which might uh, lead us uh, to think that we might see a reversal in uh, in the trend. Looking at the pound, we can see the pound uh, quite steady and pointing to the downside after a good rally that it had yesterday. 138.62 for the pound with the RSI and stochastic pointing downwards only a couple of hours ahead of the uh, Fed uh, interest rate decision. The USDJPY pair pushed uh, to the upside on the European trading session today, trading now at uh, 110.14 with the RSI stochastic uh, up, up in their overbought levels. Anything can happen as soon as the um, Fed meeting starts. The Aussie dollar, just like uh, gold futures and the European currencies, pushed uh, to the downside today. Yeah, with um, uh, the Aussie dollar trading at 0.7331 as we speak again with the RSI and stochastic pointing downwards. We might see traders uh, setting up their first take profit uh, targets to the downside around the 0.7297 level. USDCAD, on the other hand, is uh, waiting for a catalyst to uh, surprise us with a push to the upside once again. 125.88 this afternoon. Yeah, we're looking at uh, RSI stochastic pointing upwards. And in uh, times like this, very, very likely traders will aim for uh, 126.76. At, uh, as the first take profit target. And if that will be uh, broken, then probably they will aim for the 127.28 as the second level. Yeah. And uh, for the third level, yeah, we might be looking at 128.05 or 128 flat. Yeah. Somewhere in that region. Let's see how uh, the SP 500 opened today. It opened to the downside. There we go. 
yeah, we saw a negative opening. We see a push to the downside for the S&P 500, 4,395.80 with the RSI stochastic pointing downwards. Let's see what's going to happen. Dow Jones Industrial Average also um, spiked higher, but it's currently trading to the downside at $35,061.20. Again, with the RSI stochastic indicating for a potential um, uh, switch of, uh, of trend. Okay, the US dollar index uh, is pushing to the upside a couple of hours uh, ahead of the Fed uh, meeting. However, from the technical point of view, guys, yeah, let's not forget that uh, the candlestick formation did not manage to uh, create higher highs for quite some time now. However, if we look at it on a daily chart, okay, we can see something very, very interesting. This is the uh, US dollar index chart, and this is the euro chart. Okay, the euro was pushing down for the entire month. Okay, while the dollar was pushing higher. Is it time for a change? This is the question. And I'm going to ask uh, Rian uh, that question in just a minute uh, from now. Meanwhile, we're looking at uh, gold futures on a 60 minute chart uh, trading to the downside on the back of a stronger US dollar, 1,796. Uh, Right, one thousand seven hundred and ninety-five dollars and ninety cents for uh, for gold. We can see the volatility picking up there. Silver futures also pointing to the downside, twenty-four dollars and seventy-four cents for uh, for silver. And the infamous Bitcoin is also uh, pushing to the downside after a surprise uh, today. It topped forty, almost forty-one thousand dollars once again. Thirty-nine thousand seven hundred and two dollars for uh, Bitcoin this afternoon. And uh, Ethereum is currently trading uh, below the 2,300 mark at 2,287.50. Now, let's get back to, uh, to Rian uh, Hobson. Rian, what do you reckon about the, the pattern that we can see on a daily chart for, uh, for the euro and the US dollar index? What do you reckon? Are we going to see um, um, a, a change in a, a reversal of the trend? I think we will definitely see a change in the reversal uh, in the trend. Um, what happened last week, um, yeah, it was last week with Christine Lagarde. It was, I think it, even the week before um, when she actually put out a statement about she's also talking about 2% um, um, symmetric uh, inflation for the European Union. And, and that actually pushed the, the euro down. And, and ever since when she was also um, talking about um, inflation um, at the policy statement of the euro, it actually just, just went down. It was all Christine Lagarde with the inf new inflation trajectory and also about um, the, the inflation that would be transitory, talking the same language of the Federal Reserve, basically. So that pushed actually the euro down. And believe me, Jerome Powell is going to talk maybe the same story tonight, what she was talking about. And I think that is where it can start to change um, um, in the euro's favor where it can go down. Now, I don't know what else they can do or talk about besides transitory inflation and maybe talking about taper, tapering. But as things stands for me, I think personally, we might see a huge reversal for the euro back to the to the one two level. Uh, back up to the to the one two, 121, you say? 121. Right there. Yep, correct. Right. Okay. Well, my, okay. I have a different opinion from the technical point of view. Yeah. We can see if we draw support resistance levels and if we uh, break down the chart a bit, yeah, we can see that uh, we got a bounce from, uh, from the 118.52. And if we look towards the left hand side, we can see how important yeah, this support uh, resistance level is for the price. Also, looking at uh, the candlesticks on a daily chart, yeah, big, big rejection over there uh, from that. Um, 118.56. Uh, Looking at the previous low, yeah, the previous low sits at 117.15. Yeah, we it still has a bit of room to go. We might still see the euro weakening, yeah, for uh, for the week, let's say, yeah, retesting that 117.10, 117.11 uh, level, and then we might see a uh, a reversal in uh, in the trend however if uh, if we look at the charts we can see that the euro is trading at its highs yeah on a daily chart yeah very close to the same highs that it had on the 27th of february oh that's my birthday by the way uh 2018 yeah so 
let's see let's see uh, how this will go well if we look at the us dollar index here we can see the us dollar index trading at its lows close to its lows again the same um the same lows or close to the same lows it had on uh in march 2018. Yeah. okay so let's see let's see what's gonna happen um with the inflation um yeah being at uh five percent in the us and uh and a growth of ten percent yeah considering that the covid uh, the covid madness yeah the covid cases are increasing and the covid madness is still here and probably will still uh see the covid madness uh lasting or carrying through yeah 2021 maybe beginning of 2022 that's when i think we can get a clear clear view of uh of the trajectory of these two important uh, assets for the long run what do you reckon you owe a bottle of whiskey if you get it wrong um, yeah. um <laughs> you just want to break even with me i know you just want to break even with me so you don't pay for the postage fees yeah because sending me two bottles of whiskey from south africa here is going to cost you more than the bottle of whiskey itself but this is what's happening so far now let's uh let's uh, have a quick look at some uh some trading signals provided by um by investing.com if you want to see more trading signals guys uh, markets.com has an amazing trading platform yeah a web trading platform that uh shows you the the trading signals directly on the charts right we are a few minutes into the um we're 15 minutes actually into the uh us trading session right and uh looking at the charts right now we can see uh euro usd indicating uh four uh strong sell signals on all four time frames we're looking at the pound with a couple of strong sell uh as well USDJPY strong buy um apart from a from a five minute chart USDCHF strong buy again and the Aussie dollar is uh, following the euro and the pound to an extent with four strong sell indications right the euro neutral versus the um, the pound with a couple of strong sell indications on a hourly and daily charts and USD CAD is indicating buy and strong buy all over the board the Kiwi dollar seems to be weakening versus the uh, the US dollar today and we're looking at the euro uh, weakening as well versus the Japanese yen and the Swiss franc. The pound seems to be weakening as well on a 5 minute chart versus the Japanese yen and the Swiss franc. So uh, overall we're looking at um, the European currencies uh, weakening, yeah, the Aussie dollar down, Kiwi dollar down and the US dollar strengthening today. This is basically the sentiment that we see on the markets. Are you on the same side, Rian? Um, I'm waiting for Jerome Powell tonight. Then <laughs> now, <laughs> now I'm just keeping quiet. Waiting for Jerome Powell. He must make the decision. I will follow. Right. Okay. Okay. You don't want to jump the gun. Very interesting. Right. Well, we better wrap it up then. I don't have any crypto news today as the focus uh, will be mainly on, um, on the crude oil inventories and on the Fed interest rate decision. Would you add anything more to uh, this beautiful uh, Wednesday, Rian? Um, just uh, wait for Jerome Powell. Uh, whatever Jerome Powell saying, if you look at the charts and it moves in that direction, I think it will be transitory. Go with it. Right. Okay. While uh, Rian Hobson has a date with uh, Jerome Powell and he's waiting for Jerome Powell, I'm waiting for those two bottles of whiskey to arrive from uh, from South Africa. Right. This was it, uh, Rian. Thank you very much. Thank you ever so much for today. I'll see you again uh, tomorrow if uh, you're available. If you don't decide to take another day off, like rich people do. <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah, I'll I'll talk to you about Jerome Powell more tomorrow. Have a nice uh, day, uh, Rian, and happy trading if you're going to trade. Sure. Thanks a lot. Same to you. Right. Thank you so much. Right. We had Rian Hobson with us today. We had uh, Brad Alexander. We had a beautiful day in uh, in the markets. And the US markets uh, just opened half an hour ago. So brace, brace, brace for volatility. This is it from my side today, beautiful people. Join us again tomorrow, same time, same place for new round of market talks. And until then, remember to trade responsibly and may all your trades be in the money. This show is sponsored by uh, Markets.com. Discover how some of the top executives are trading their own companies with our insider trades tool. See who's been buying or selling stock and what their trades say about insider sentiment. Use this unique big data tool to make more informed stock trades. That's higher trading from MarketX.